Hey guys, I'm back again. Welcome to day 32 in the life of Google Pixel 7a. Gonna walk you through another day in the life with this phone. I start my day at 6 a.m. Usually I check my notification and it tells me how long the phone's gonna last. In this case, it's gonna last me until 2 p.m. So I already know my faith bright and early. Shockingly, only eight hours of battery life since I wake up at 6 a.m. It will last me until 2 p.m. Then I admire the phone 6.1 inch display. I think it is big enough for the most part. I never really feel like the phone is tiny or anything like that. 6.1 is considered compact these days, but you still need to tilt the phone to reach certain corner of the screen. Although these days if you're using gestures, you can pretty much flick the phone anywhere to access most parts. Whenever I'm customizing my app, I tend to put the one that is most used near the bottom and the other ones all the way at the top so I don't gotta stretch my fingers too often. I try to keep everything within reach and with the Google UI, I find it really easy to use. Swipe from the bottom, you get to the home button, left and right. And then if you drag the corner, you can hit back. And if you're on a home screen, you just simply pull down the notification shade by just dragging down anywhere. You can pretty much reach almost anything. So 6.1 inch is a solid screen size. And it is bright for you to use on a daily basis. If you're going outside, it may be somewhat challenging to view from certain angles, but you can still see it. And I always spend my morning doing my same routine. I make my coffee, oatmeal for breakfast, make these videos. Usually take about one to two hours once I'm done with all of that. If I have time, I'll go for a quick walk before work. So now let's take this phone for a spin. The next few clips is going to be unedited audio straight from the Google Pixel 7a as I go for a jog. 8.20 in the morning. It's been a while since I was able to finish all my stuff. So now I can go for a walk. Currently using the front selfie camera. Listening to music from my free Google Pixel Bud A series that was given to me when I bought the Google Pixel 7a. Pretty cool. So right now I'm walking, listening to music. It says the music is actually playing as I'm recording. It is a little distracting. All right, now switching over to the horizontal mode since this is the preferred method in the YouTube format. But one thing I don't like about Pixel camera is if you turn off the camera, you turn it back on again, it always default back to the picture instead of the last mode you're using. I do a lot of video recording, so every time I open up the camera, I have to switch over to video, hit record, and then it's just a lot of unnecessary steps. I know on Samsung they have an option that you can turn on to remember the last settings that you use. That way, once you launch your camera, it will just go automatically to the video setting. Save some time instead of having to navigate it every single time. Um, that's one of the downfall of Pixel's camera. I know they like to keep things nice and simple. But the, having more options is always nice as well. And these Pixel Buds surprisingly work pretty well. For example, I can just literally use Google Assistant right now. I got music playing in my ears. So let me just pause it real quick. So interesting enough, while I was recording the video and trying to use Google Assistant on my earbuds to tell the music to pause, it would not do it because my video camera is using a mic. So only one I guess tool or software can get access to the mic at the same time. Um, so I have to record the video recording and then I can just say the OKG keyword to activate the command in my earbuds and then I was able to turn off the music that way. About yesterday I had my alarm clock ringing and I was kept screaming for it to stop and this is what it stopped. Super annoying though Google advertise. Google's assistant hands-free doesn't always work, especially if you're using the earbuds and your alarm is on. Okay, 8.30 a.m. Phone is about 86%. Currently using the main camera. So I have to launch the camera from the front and then turn it back around. Got somebody approaching me, so let me turn it back. I won't look like a weirdo. So like I mentioned before, while using a Google Pixel camera, you don't have the ability to switch between the front lens and the back lens in the middle of recording. Therefore, you have to actually pause the video in order to turn it around. In general, the camera is pretty good for taking pictures and videos. On a normal day, I don't typically go out and 
take pictures of birds, flowers, lakes, and waterfalls. But every now and then I do find the inspiration. So it is a fully capable camera. You just gotta find good lighting, use your imagination a little bit. Even if you're taking pictures of a cup or a rock, you can make it look pretty good depending on how you take the picture. So it's gotta get creative there. And once I'm done with my early morning jog, I make my way back home to prepare for a long day of work. During work, I will use the Google Recorder app when I'm in important meetings to transcribe my notes. Rarely ever make any phone calls on my Google Pixel 7a, but it does work for incoming and outgoing calls as it should, so no complaints there. For work, I have my Outlook and Microsoft Teams connected to my phone, so even if I'm not on my computer at all times, I get all my messages and emails. So no delays or anything like that. It works fine as a work phone in addition to a personal phone. After work, I like to use my Google Pixel 7a to relax and unwind on top of Snorlax. This is me laying on top of his foot. My office is not that big. He literally takes up about half a room, but totally worth it. Sometimes just gotta take a little break. In general, I never watch any movies or anything on my Google Pixel 7a. I don't want to be holding my phone for two hours or putting it on a stand and staring at it for a long period of time either. If I know we're gonna watch something for two hours, I'd rather watch it on the computer or a TV with a larger screen. I do have YouTube videos playing throughout the day though whenever I have free time, if I'm in a bathroom, eating lunch, washing the dishes. Every three minutes that I get, I do like to fill up my brain with knowledge, different perspective, get inspirations. And I recently just downloaded the Pokemon trading card game live. At least now it's easier to do. It's available on the App Store. Over the last 10 years, you would need to download the APK since it was only technically available for tablet. And you had to sideload it if you want to use it on your phone. But now the experience is better on the phone. Everything is a bit more optimized. Not sure why I got such bad reviews on the Play Store, so I just browse a little bit in the comments. I do agree it does take forever to initially boot up, but it does eventually boot up and the gameplay is fine. The animation is cool. I mean, it's not perfect. I feel like when I'm playing around with it, the cards are not all fully displayed. I have to scroll back and forth, which is slightly annoying. And all the cards that I have accumulated over the last five years or so are now gone. I know most of it do transfer over into the new system. You get crystals and can rede redeem for new cards. It's okay. I don't mind starting off somewhat fresh though. I haven't redeemed anything. I just use the basic decks as provided and gets the job done for the most part. I have 25 minutes to spare. I could just launch up this game and start playing it. Although there are cases you can win a match in a few minutes as well if the other person is AF. So, like gaming, phone does get warm here and there if you do game for long periods of time. Pixel 7a, although it is fast, the chip does run hot. And throughout the day, I just hang out on the Google Discover page whenever I have free time. I swipe to the right, see if there's any interesting articles that, that catch my attention. And I just skim through them whenever I see something. This one is about the OnePlus Nord, which is the budget version. My mom's actually using an older version of this phone, and she's pretty happy with it, I guess. <laughs> I uh, booted her over from an uh, iPhone 6 or something she was using before. She lost it. I just got her a cheaper phone so she don't keep losing it. And for a couple hundred bucks, you get a large display, fast charging. Lots to like about the OnePlus series. I mean, it's not an iPhone, doesn't have all the UI and some of it may be complicated for older people, but she's been using it for two to three years, so I think that should be fine. It is a much better value than spending over $700 for an older iPhone Pro Max to get a similar screen size. And with the iPhone Pro, she's not going to be able to utilize all the full potential anyways, so the OnePlus know what it is for her. And going back to the Google Pixel 7a, it does have a very short battery life. As I mentioned earlier in the, in the video, I constantly have to worry about charging it, making sure it's on a wireless charger while I'm working, or towards the end of the day, if I know I'm going out, I just need to connect it to a charger, whether I bring a portable charger with me or I just leave it alone and let it charge for half an hour or so as I get ready to go out. Because I know when I'm using it and charging at the same time, the battery does not really charge much. And at night, I just have the phone sitting on the sink, music played from the speakers, 
and everything is loud works fine enough i can hear it in the shower just fine so overall the google pixel 7a is a solid choice despite some of the flaws it's a great all-around phone that's perfect for everyday use if you don't want to spend more than 500 dollars for a smartphone it all depends on your lifestyle if you work from home like me you can just sit on a wireless charger all day and you'll be fine if you're out and about and on adventures on a daily basis make sure you bring a portable charger so if you're looking for a new phone that take great photos and videos i would highly recommend the google pixel 7a it does have slow charging though but you want something that's more fast and powerful don't care about videos and photos you can go for the oneplus 10t with this amazing 120 watt fast charging so you can get it from zero to 100 percent in 20 minutes which i find really cool even to this day all right guys thanks for watching be sure to subscribe to my channels for more videos like these please drop a like let me know your thoughts on the google pixel 7a below and if there's anything else you guys want me to cover i know i've been beating a dead horse at this point with my in-depth coverage of the google pixel 7a but i do guy i do hope that you guys find it insightful and helpful just to see it from a different perspective of an average user i already placed my order for the reza plus 2023 so Looking forward to getting that by the end of the month. And the Google Pixel Fold will be available to pre-order on Amazon in a few days as well. So I will also be covering that phone. So I'm going to be doing a code series where I switch sims between both phones. So stay tuned for those videos. Alright guys, please check out Day 30 on the Google Pixel 7a if you want to bench more on this series.